health aid. We got the glare. We got the. Where was I? Right, 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 right. Health aid, tropical punt. Health aid kombucha. Not my favorite. Coming out of California, coming in hot. Um, you know, not much to it. Doesn't say whether to shake it or not. Just says to follow my gut. Well, my gut says I'm thirsty. Uh, so let me open this up and drink it. <sighs> this is number nine, RJ Barrett. It's no secret that the Knicks uh, beating the Atlanta Hawks is a virtual impossibility. They simply don't have the experience or the offensive production required to get the job done. Plainly put, Trey Young is a little too good for our defense. This has a really nice, sweet, a little bit fruity vinegar kombucha aroma. It smells wonderful and I can't wait to taste it. It's all their kombuchas are pretty much kind of clear and with like subtle hints. Actually, you know what? This way you can see the color. She. I love the Knicks. Always have. All right, well, I'm dead wrong about that. It's kind of a full mustard yellow sort of color. Gingery. Never been a big fan of health aid kombucha. I find that their flavors are very, very mild. I like it a bit stronger. I need to dust this apartment. You feel me? Having said that, this is very good. Very good. Superb. This is great. Has just enough uh, kombucha like bite. Not overpowering. It's refreshing. Tropical punch. Eh. I don't know if I'm getting a tropical punch out of this. What's it supposed to have? Pineapple, mango, orange, tangy. <clears throat> I don't find it tangy. Subtle sweetness, a little bit of acidity from the kombucha ingredients, which I'll read out real quick. Organic kombucha, filtered water, culture, yeast and bacteria, black tea, green tea, cane sugar, carbonation, cold press, pineapple juice, mango puree, organic orange juice, I'm allergic to mango skin, so we're going to see if it translates into, uh, you know, organic puree. And it might. When I, uh, mango skin and poison ivy have the same, I think I talked about this in another video like a year ago, but it's the same like active chemical. It, it, I don't remember the name, but it's something like urethiol, something starting with a U. And uh, if you're highly allergic to poison ivy, as I am, chances are you'll be allergic to mango skin. I was eating a raw mango, I don't know, long ass time ago, and I got like blisters and shit. It was a fucking mess, horrible. Um, I doubt it'll be in like food components, but I guess we'll find out. Hope I don't go into anaphylactic shock. I don't have an EpiPen. Uh, I don't even think I have a primary care physician. This is really good. I'm gonna say that to you. Maybe I should keep filming just in case I do have some kind of reaction to it, but I think I'll be all right. A bubbly probiotic tea, the best tasting and highest quality kombucha you can buy. That's simply false. Uh, well, I don't know about the highest quality, <clears throat> but it's not the best tasting. And I would love to see any kind of study that supports that because, in my opinion, humble opinion, personal and honest opinion, GT's is like, as far as 
flavor, taste, there's like a different realm than Health Aid. And I'm not trying to shit on Health Aid. They got their own thing going. Motorcycle. But I'm just saying, you know, you don't need to go out of your way to say we're the best tasting in the game. I mean, if anything, tip the hat to GTs and say, yo, good shit. We're gunning for you, but, you know. Plus, GTs gets all, like, the nice little... Does this have any positivity on it? It has, uh... Should not be left unrefrigerated. Pregnant woman breastfeeding. 10% juice. 80 cal. And 20 grams... 12 grams of sugar. 16 grams of sugar. Slightly more caloric than GTs. Most of the GTs I drink. I think they're 60. And, like, 10 to 12 grams... It's uh, pretty, you know, pretty subtle difference. Probably does not matter at all. I haven't had a health aid kombucha in a long time, so I can't remember what I thought of the last one. But I like this. It tastes good. I love R.J. Barrett. I think he will be... Um, a very solid player in the NBA, and, and uh, you know I think he will reach his pinnacle of production as long as he keeps getting solid coaching. I think he'll reach his pinnacle of production in about three years. I think he will be a very slow riser. I don't think he's going to be one of these guys that has like a big jump from one year to the next. You know, I think he was 14 points a game rookie season, 18 this past season. Maybe average one more assist, <clears throat> one more rebound. Uh, he might have taken a hit in, in steals or blocks. Like maybe he's getting like a half a steal, half a block or something like that since there's more, a couple more talented uh, people on the team now. I don't, I don't see RJ being a superstar, but I see him being a very good player. Like high value over replacement at his position or area of expertise. As far as a ceiling on quickly, I, I, it's, it's, I haven't seen. He doesn't get enough minutes. You know, Tibbs likes to win games, so he likes to stick with the people who he knows can, you know, get the production. Although, as we see in the playoffs, really ain't many people on the Knicks who can guarantee you much of anything outside of the 2010 Bulls. Um, and Randall's a big fucking question mark. We all know. If Atlanta boots the Knicks out um, in this next game, I mean, who else do you blame? Do you blame a 20-year-old prospect? Do you blame quickly 21-year-old, like, mega prospect since nobody really expected much out of quickly, although I think it was a very good steal at the position he was drafted. You, you can't blame Derrick Rose. He's 33, 34 years old. And his production in the playoffs has been outstanding. Taj Gibson has never been a big scorer. I mean, Taj, Taj Gibson was an okay defender, a good defender. But, I mean, again, if we're going to try to, you know, and then you, then you got to talk about sixth man, seventh man, Alec Burks, I mean, uh, Reggie. I mean, I just don't see Julius got us here in the regular season. So... To not expect that he would continue his production. I mean, most good or to good to great players, their production increases in the playoffs. I don't know if that's a sign of the. I don't know if there's a difference between a good player and a great player, but that's just what I see. You know, you look at all the players around the league, compare their regular season stats to their playoff stats. Typically, they do better in the playoffs. I mean, Julius, it, he's like a different basketball player in the playoffs. I don't know how to explain it. I've never seen a, a, you know, a dip in production like this before from anyone I would consider to be a great player. So, a lot to unpack there. The media is going to have a field day with Randall. I just hope that management figures it out. It doesn't do anything drastic in typical Knicks style. We have enough pieces uh, in place in the front office to prevent the powers that be from making drastic changes because I actually think the Knicks 
on a really good trend right now to becoming a very strong team for years to come if we can keep drafting well and developing players and developing a play style, which the Knicks kind of have that run up the score kind of style. Like they get a little lead, they pull in these shooters, this Alec Burks kind of stuff, and run up the score on teams. And teams, before they know it, the game's out of reach, the Knicks are running away with it, and they were able to beat really good teams in the regular season with that strategy without Mitch Robinson, you know, who's going to completely change the defensive strategy. Thing is, when we get in those games where we're not in the lead, where we kind of trail three quarters, and then we try to make a move in the fourth quarter, I don't think either Tibbs has an instated new strategy or the players are too young to kind of remember all the different variations, or they might not have enough experience to know how to ad-lib. For example, in the transition game, a lot of those players look really lost on the court in transition, including RJ included, and you know, obviously, quickly and Obi, you know, they get lost very quickly when, when they have to uh, come out of formation and, and start to ad lib. You know, obviously Obi and quickly have a lot of talents. Obi's physically gifted. There's a lot of things he can do with the basketball. He can catch tons of alley oops. We don't have a lot of true passers on the team. So who's going to be feeding him? You know, uh, quickly has huge, big range. He can shoot from anywhere. Well, there's not a lot of situations that really call for that. You know, that's when you're running up the score or you're coming down from a 20-point deficit. And when we're in a 20-point deficit, typically Tibbs is not putting quickly in the game because he doesn't have enough experience to, to try to fight back. So we are still a little bit in search of a team identity, and, and to get there requires A, players being healthy, and B, players getting the experience of playing together and being able to execute the strategies that Tibbs comes up with. I just hope we don't go old school Knicks style and take, you know, one bad ending of the season and say, oh, fuck it, and just start over all over again. Because I do think that we're on to something, but we don't really know what it is yet.